forward converter has has three bindings in which two bindings are on the primary side and one binding is of course on the on the secondary side so let us first of all draw this schematic and then we will uh, proceed further let us say this is this is n3 this is n1 this is n2 and also we have the voltage this is v3 this is v1 and here we have the voltage v2 let us say this is lx and the voltage across this lx is vlx and the current that flows through this particular inductance is i is ilx here we have ic this is i naught this is r and here we have the voltage v naught which is which will appear across this particular resistive load we have only one switch here that can be operated uh, turn on and off based on some control algorithms we have a diode d3 here so we have three bindings this n1 and n2 they constitutes the uh, operation when we turn on this switch s1 or the switch sw and this d3 actually works when we turn off the switch likewise we have this vs which is the supply voltage so let us analyze this let us analyze this particular uh, circuit so first let's have a disclaimer it is the most widely used used converter topology for power ratings between between 150 and and 200 watts right so beyond 200 watts the input current becomes excessive and that provides too much burden on this uh, on the current rating of this particular switch and therefore it is restricted up to this 200 watt and for this 150 watt it should be between 60 to 200 volts beyond this 200 volt the voltage stress on this switch becomes excessive and therefore we restrict it to a maximum of 200 volt and if we reduce this less than the 60 volt then the input current become excessive and that again creates the excessive current stress on on this particular uh, on this particular converter switch now to start the analysis we first need to convert this in terms of the in terms of the uh, of the transformer equivalent model and for that we require to establish the magnetizing inductance across one of the windings here so let us stick with the convention and we will place the magnetizing inductance lm right in parallel with this primary winding n1 so this is lm and this is the current ilm that flows through this magnetizing inductance lm now we will see that whenever we turn off this switch then this n3 it comes into action and whenever this switch s w is turned on then the binding n1 and n2 participate in transferring the energy from the primary side to the secondary side so let's have the analysis of this particular converter uh, likewise the flyback converter there are two states for this for this converter the first one is when we turn on the switch so let us have so let us have the analysis for for switch close when we turn off when we turn on the switch then we have this type of a network this becomes open circuit because the diode the diode is connected if you see here the diode has this cathode connected with this dot end and therefore when we turn on this switch 
all the dot ends become positive consequently this d3 becomes reverse wise and therefore i will leave this and 3 this tertiary winding open now i have this lm this is ilm here we have n1 we have this v1 this is the switch which is closed on the secondary side we have we have this d1 of short circuit because it is its anode is connected with the dot end which is now positive this becomes reverse wise so this d2 becomes open circuit here we have the inductance lx across which we have vlx and the current ilx flows through this inductance here we have the output capacitor and right here we have the we have the resistance across which we are getting the output uh, voltage v naught now if you see when we design this particular system we create equivalent circuit to establish some expressions that define the voltage gain and the stresses on the semiconductor devices that we use so if we look on to this particular analysis of when the switch is closed then this v1 is equal to vs which is the supply voltage which is applied to the winding n1 we have v2 that is equal to v1 into n2 over n1 that is equal to vs into n2 over n1 likewise we have this v3 which is equal to v1 n3 over n1 that is equal to vs into n3 over over n1 so the first thing here is let us analyze what is the voltage which is applied on this diode d3 so the voltage across d3 is given as minus vs minus v3 which is less than 0 and therefore this indicates that this diode that this diode d this diode d3 is actually in reverse wise mode also for this diode d2 this diode d2 becomes forward biased sorry this diode d1 becomes forward biased because this v2 has this dotted and positive and therefore we have a positive voltage applied on this diode d1 and therefore this diode becomes forward biased whereas when this diode becomes forward biased then this potential also becomes equal to this v2 and because this diode is connected in in this particular configuration therefore this diode d2 becomes reverse biased and consequently we have this type of a circuit available when we turn on this this particular switch so because we have uh, i want to keep the assumption same uh, for this forward converter as well therefore one of the assumption that i took in the that i assumed in the flyback converter analysis it is that the output voltage stays constant so if i say that if v naught is constant then the voltage across this particular inductance lx which is on which is which is here which is this one this becomes equal to vlx equal to v2 minus v naught v2 is vs n2 over n1 minus v naught and that is equal to lx dilx over dt which is a standard expression for the voltage across the inductor that v is equal to ldi over dt now because this is the voltage across the inductance lx therefore it is written as lx dilx over dt 
Now, based on this thing, dilx over dt becomes equal to vs n2 over n1 minus v0 over lx. And that is equal to delta i l x over delta t that is during the time when we turn on this particular switch. So this is the net change in the current is delta i l x and the delta t which is the time during which the this uh, current has uh, th this this the, the voltage across the inductance is v2 minus v0 that is equal to delta i l x over dt which is the time during which we turn on the on this particular switch. So Likewise, we did for the uh, flyback converter, we want to see what is the net change in this inductor current during the time we, we turn on the, on the switch SW. So, delta I L X, when the switch is closed, is equal to this V S N2 over N1 minus V0 L X times the duration during which we have turned on the switch and that is equal to, that is equal to DT. So, with this in mind, we will now see what is the voltage, what is the voltage across the magnetizing inductance LM. So, during the time the switch is closed, then delta I LM, which is the current net change in the inductor current, that is equal to Vs dt over over Lm and this is derived from the expression that the net change in the in this particular inductor current is dependent on this time period dt and the voltage Vs over, over Lm. So this is the net change in the current through the magnetizing uh, inductance Lm. So delta I L M is equal to V S D T over L M and the switch current I S W is equal to I 1 plus I L M. So if you see here, when we turn on this particular switch, so the current I S which is coming from, from this voltage source V S, it actually divides between the magnetizing branch and the primary winding and it combines here where the switch is particularly connected here. So this is the switch. So the total current I switch is equal to the current that flows through the magnetizing inductance branch and the current that flows through the primary winding N1. So we have I switch is equal to I L uh, I1 plus plus I L M. Now let us have an analysis when we when the switch is closed. Now if we see If we see this particular circuit, because there was a current that was flowing through this magnetizing inductance and therefore if we turn this device off, if we turn this switch off, this current cannot be stopped instantaneously because like we discussed in the flyback converter, in a forward converter, the magnetizing inductance holds all the properties of an actual inductor. And therefore, it is not possible to instantaneously make the make the current zero through this magnetizing path. So, an alternate path has to be provided to this LM so that the current uh, can decay naturally. To do so, uh, like we have uh, we have actually uh, you know disconnected this switch SW, so the current will actually route it to the path through through this uh, through the non dotted end of the primary winding n1 which means that all the non dotted ends become uh, become uh, positive and making the dotted end of all the windings become negative thus it will actually forward bias this diode d3 and it will uh, it will reverse bias this diode d1 so the equivalent circuit for for this forward converter when the switch is off is something like this one so this switch is off so we have this is vs 
this is a diode d3 it is now on here we have the magnetizing inductance lm and the current will have this ilm shall have a route through this winding n1 on the secondary side we have this diode d2 uh, sorry d1 which is uh, which is reverse biased and this diode d2 will become forward biased because we also have an inductance lx connected on the secondary side of this particular converter so in order to have a continuous current flowing through this lx this diode d2 will become forward biased we have this d3 forward biased because now this dotted end is is negative so let me write it as as we as switch as w is closed is open the ilm enters the non dotted end of n1 thus making all dotted ends on negative right so consequently we have d3 will go to forward bias mode while this d2 will also go in a forward bias mode while this d1 reverse biases and thus the overall circuit will look like the one that i have just drawn so here we have this voltage v dot this is i l x and this is plus minus v l x here this is plus minus v s w which is the voltage across this particular switch we need to analyze it because for the design purpose we need to establish the current and the voltage stress across uh, power electronic switches so with this in mind this current shall have shall have a path through uh, through this uh, through this particular uh, winding n3 so when this d3 turns on because the current is entering the non dotted terminal here therefore the current should enter the dotted terminal of this winding n3 and therefore this is the is the routing of the current uh, that flows through uh, that flows through this d3 remember that the d3 the operation and the function of the winding n3 and d3 is only to demagnetizes this particular transformer fully before uh, we apply the next switching cycle so let us write down the equations now here we have i1 that is equal to minus i l m because this is the direction of the current i1 that was uh, let me draw it here this is the current i1 so i l m is now uh, coming from the non rotated end and therefore this i1 is equal to minus i l m and we have already discussed that the diode uh, d3 is is now forward biased for this particular uh, for this particular uh, switching state and therefore this v3 which is this so v3 is equal to minus vs right because this v3 is measured with respect to this dotted end and here we have this point equal to vs and therefore this v3 is equal to minus vs so what is v1 v1 is equal to v3 into n1 over n3 and that is equal to minus vs n1 over n3 similarly v2 is equal to v3 into n2 over n3 and that is equal to minus vs into n2 over n2 over n3 so the next thing here is to now establish what is the voltage across the across the inductance which is connected on the secondary side lx so to find that vlx is equal to ldilx over over dt this is the standard expression and that is equal to that is equal to minus v naught because there is no uh, you know voltage connected from the n2 winding because this d uh, d1 is now reverse biased so that is equal to minus v naught and therefore uh, we have the we have the dilx over dt that is equal to minus v naught over 
minus v naught over l x and this represents that the current will will decay uh, linearly at a rate equals to minus v naught over over l x and that again is equal to delta i l x over delta t and that is equal to delta i l x over 1 minus d into t this is equal to 1 minus d into t so what is the net change in the in the in the inductor current i l x when the switch is open that is equal to minus v naught over l x times 1 minus d into 1 minus d into t so to establish the the transfer function now we will apply the expression for the inductor in a steady state condition that is the net change in the inductor current should be equal to zero otherwise the circuit is supposedly not operating otherwise it is stated that the circuit is not in a steady state condition so this means that delta i l x closed plus delta i l x open should be equal to should be equal to zero and therefore we will use this particular expression this expression and the one that we have derived here we will use these two expressions and we will equate them together to find out the transfer function and that is equal to vs n2 over n1 minus v0 dt over lx minus v0 1 minus d t over lx and that is equal to that is equal to 0. Now this gives me v0 is equal to vsd into n2 over to n2 over n1 and this is the and this is the transfer function or the voltage gain of a forward converter. If you carefully examine this particular thing, V0 is equal to Vs into D. This is nothing but a buck converter relation here. Right? So buck converter also has linear control expression, and that is for this forward converter as well. We have a linear control characteristics for, for, for a forward converter. Rest is this N2 over N1. This is actually a new component in the in the voltage gain expression. So using this n2 over n1 or a turn ratio expression, we can control the output of the of the forward converter as well. But this is actually a fixed quantity. So once it is fixed in a design, you cannot alter that one. However, you can actually specify multiple windings to have multiple outputs uh, for the, for a given forward converter we will see shortly how we can uh, create the multiple output scenarios for uh, for this forward converter let us move ahead and let us do the rest of the analysis we know that the voltage across the magnetizing inductance is equal to v1 that is equal to minus vs into n1 over n3 and that is equal to lm dilm over dt which is a standard expression for the the voltage across the inductance so dilm over dt is equal to minus vs over lm n1 over n1 over n3 and because it is not possible for the diode current id3 to become negative therefore this expression holds only uh, for the time during which the current stays positive so delta ilm over delta t is equal to minus v s over l m n1 over over n3 so again uh, for a steady state condition whatever is the net change in the current during the positive half cycle or during the time when we turn on the switch sw it should be equal to the uh, decay in the current during the time when we when we turn off the switch so therefore let that delta t x be the be the time for ilm to decrease from from the peak value to zero so delta ilm over delta tx is equal to minus vs dt over lm that is equal to minus vs into lm into n1 over n1 over n3 so 
if I solve for this delta T x that is equal to d t into n3 over n3 over n1 this is the delta T x so now if I let that T naught is a time at which I L M becomes zero then T naught is equal to D T plus delta T x and that is dt plus dt into n3 over n1 and that is dt into 1 plus n3 over 1 plus n3 over n1. So the current must reach 0 before the next cycle therefore this t0 is always less than this t. So s dt into 1 plus n3 over n1 should be less than uh, the time total time d and this is equal to d into d into 1 plus n3 over n1 is less than equal to 1. So if let us say if this n3 over n1 is equal to 1 and which is uh, this is usually the case uh, for uh, most of the practical scenarios then we have d comes less than 0 0.5 uh, so the voltage across the open switch is vsw is equal to vs minus minus v1 and this gives us an expression for the voltage across this particular switch so voltage across this particular switch comes out in two ways this is vs minus v1 that is equal to vs minus minus Vs into N1 over N3 and that is equal to Ns, uh, sorry Vs, uh, let me write it again, this is Vs into 1 plus N1 over N3 and this is true for dt is less than t is less than t naught and t naught is a time at which the transistor uh, did that the, the and it is the time t naught is a time in which the current becomes equal to 0. And it is equal to Vs for for T naught is less than T is less than equal to less than equal to T. Uh, let us draw the, uh, the let us draw some important waveforms here. So so these are the some of the important waveforms. This is I L X. Since it is on the on the secondary side, it is having a continuous connection mod. This is delta I L X which is the net change in the in the current through the output uh, inductor lx this is ilm ilm actually has to finish before the end of the switching cycle and let us say this is equal to t naught this is equal to dt and this is the actual time delta tx during which the current has to uh, the transformer has to uh, magnetizing has to be neutral uh, neutral uh, has to neutralize itself and therefore this is equal to this tx and here we have the end of the switching cycle ts so uh, this is the ilm uh, similarly we have this i1 i1 has a value something like this one so we have we have a zero value after uh, the transformer is uh, magnetizing itself fully This is I1. Then we have, then we have this I2. I2 will only have the flow when the switch is on. Rather, uh, after that, this uh, this diode D1 becomes reverse bias, and therefore there is no there is no current here. Then we have this I3. I3 is is this particular current that flows only through this uh, through the time T naught. This is I3 and this is the current that flows through the diode D3 and the last one is the and the last one is this Vx. Vx is actually the the voltage here. This is Vx and this one is this is V2. So the voltage across this Vx only appears when we have this D2 reverse biased which is the time during which we have we turn on the switch. So only during this DTS time 
we have this uh, thing available and that is equal to vs into n1 over over n2 sorry n2 over n2 over n1 and after that we have we have uh, we have no voltage because the diode uh, d2 actually is powered biased and uh, a forward biased diode is replaced by a by a short circuit rest assured we require to find out what is the uh, what is the value of this capacitor output capacitor c naught so if you see here this whole stage is similar to that of a buck converter and therefore the expression for expression of c naught for a buck converter is used here as well and that is equal to delta v naught over v naught is equal to 1 minus d 8 l x c f square where l x is the inductance l, uh, l x c is the capacitance f is the frequency and this is expressed in terms of the ripple component of the output voltage now let us see how we can actually have multiple you know outputs available through using this uh, forward converter so suppose that suppose that we have uh, we have the uh, let me draw the circuit again so here we have the Vs, this is the switch, this is the diode D3, this is N3, this is, uh, sorry, this is N1, and we have the, on the second side we have the, this is D1, this is D2, and let us say this is N2, and here we have the inductance, the capacitance, and the, and the resistance. We can also have another winding here. Let us suppose we have another winding. For each winding, we require to add two diodes and the LC circuit. We can also have another winding here. And we can then specify the symbols accordingly. So now you see here that all of these windings are magnetically coupled through this primary side. So we have this N2, let us say this is N4, and let us say this is N5, right? And we also have this D1, D2, D3 is there, so let us say this is D4, this is D5, this is D6, and this is D7, and we can also specify this is LX1, this is LX2, and this is LX3. Now, if we want to control the, uh, control the, uh, the, the voltage here, we can only control the voltage for, or we can only regulate the voltage for one of the outputs here. So we first need to identify which output is actually the master output. Rest all will be treated as a slave output. So for instance, let us say that this output voltage is the master output voltage. This master output voltage is compared with, with some reference voltage, V reference. This V reference voltage will produce an error voltage, which is compared with the, with the triangular waveform. And this triangular waveform generates the, the PWM here. This is sent to some, some gate driver circuit and this gate driver circuit is used to derive, to drive the, the switch SW. Remember that if we say that this, that in a master slave concept, we can only control the output voltage. We can only regulate the output voltage of one of the windings. So we have to uh, be very judgmental in considering or in choosing the, uh, the binding uh, to act as a as a master uh, winding so this master winding output is this master winding output is actually just a minute i think i have made some mistake here so this master winding output has to be very uh, you know delicately this uh, we need to decide it very delicately that what is the requirement here so usually some sensitive load is connected across the across the master winding what about these uh, the these two winding which are the slave windings what are what is the issue here so most of the time slave winding is connected to a load which is not sensitive compared to uh, the master winding for example in a computer board 
we have a motherboard we have some other you know maybe a power supply going to the to the webcam and then we have the power supply that is used to uh, to dissipate the heat which is producing inside the system so we have the we have the exhaust fan available so that exhaust fan is actually not a sensitive load compared to a motherboard so therefore we will consider that motherboard to be uh, a master you know output and the rest of the load will act as a slave output now the question here is can we is there any way to regulate the slave output yes we can actually uh, have the uh, have the slave output regulated can be regulated if the power dissipation is allowable a linear regulator can be used right so a linear, linear regulator can be can be used for example if we want to have a 5 volt output at this at this particular slave we can actually have we can actually have this 7805 here provided that the power dissipation of this uh, particular ic is within the within the limits so we can actually use some linear regulator uh, if the system design parameters allow us to do so and therefore with this in mind we can actually have the control a certain control on the output of the slave winding as well otherwise with this uh, with this whole scenario in mind the master output is the one that controls the uh, that controls the duration for which this switch sw can be turned on and therefore only the output voltage of the master is fully regulated for the slave output if 7805 can be used or 7812 can be used uh, provided that the it do not uh, it, that the allowable power dissipation across that linear regulator stays within the limit of that particular uh, you know chip 7805 or 7812 uh, only then we can actually uh, have a control on the slave rather otherwise the slave is usually connected to the load which are less sensitive like i have given you an example of the uh, of the of the exhaust uh, that is connected in the in a computer uh, supply so uh, with this uh, i thank you all i will shortly uh, try to upload the simulation part of the flyback converter and maybe for this uh, power converter as well uh, in the next class we will uh, inshallah move on to the topics which are related to the inverter systems so i uh, thank you all for your time thank you very much allah Hafiz.